In 1992, Carl Johnson found himself taking on the Ballos, the LSPD, and the government, ending in one of the bloodiest wars in Los Santos. But to understand the story, we have to go back to the birth of O.G. Johnson. Carl Johnson was born on the floor of his childhood home in Los Santos to Beverly Johnson. Beverly had four children, Sean, Carl, Kendall, and Brian. Carl never met his father, and the only memory of him came from family, friends, and his eldest brother, Sean Sweet Johnson. Sweet was the only father figure in Carl's life, stating that Sweet made his life miserable. The two fought nonstop, and it only got worse when their youngest sibling, Lil Brian, died in 1987. The two were close and enjoyed creating mischief together, which led to his murder, though the cause of his death was never revealed. It simply implied that he was killed by a rival gang and Carl was present, but he did not attempt to help Brian. Sweet blamed Carl for Brian's death, which resulted in Carl moving to Liberty City. Carl didn't even say his final goodbye to Lil Brian. While in Liberty City, CJ found work under the son of the notorious Don Salvatore Leone. But after five years on the East Coast, it was time to go home after learning about the murder of his mother, who was killed in a drive-by shooting carried out by the ballers. Carl had no real intention of staying long, only returning for the funeral. However, that would all change. When his taxi is stopped by the LSPD, ending in him getting arrested and confronted by crash members, Frank Timpenny, Eddie Pulaski, and Jimmy Hernandez, who explain that Carl will do work for them, or they will frame him for killing their fellow officer, Ralph Pendlebury, who was murdered by Crash themselves, getting dropped off in the worst place you could imagine, Roland Heights, Ballers Country, forced to pedal his way back home. After meeting with childhood friend Big Smoke at the Johnson house, Carl finally meets with his siblings and Ryder, quickly learning that the Grove Street families lost much of their power over the last five years when the Ballers shot up his mother's funeral, a result of the growing crack cocaine trend. And though Sweet doesn't admit it, Sweet not having as much personal strength as a leader without CJ home. CJ and Sweet work furiously to successfully bring the gang back to power through various missions, with CJ regaining his brother's respect in the process. This included reuniting with the Savelle and Temple families, as well as the Aztecas leader, Cesar Viopondo, who, although a rival of Sweet's at the time, began a loving relationship with Kendall and wiping out the ballers, the sworn enemy of the Grove Street families. Carl had also helped childhood friend Jeffrey, who was better known as OG Loke, a laughable poser who aspired to be a rapper, consequently ruining rap superstar Mad Dog's career in the process. But just as the gang is at the second height of its power and is planning on taking out the rest of the ballers in an ambush, Caesar reveals to Carl that Ryder and Big Smoke have betrayed the gang to Crash and the ballers. Shit, Smoke? Crash making you sell us out? Mom! Sorry, Issy. I heard a rumor and poked around. I didn't believe it myself, but... Nah, nah, you did the right thing. I owe you, C's. I gotta go tell Sweet about... Oh, fuck! Sweet! Carl rushed to the gunfight, suspecting that Sweet and the gang are walking into a trap, and manages to hold off the ballers to rescue his wounded brother until both of them are arrested by Crash. The Grove Street families and the Varios Los Azteca practically disappear. Big Smoke became head of the drug ring, taking over all of Los Santos while managing and coaching OG Loke, selling the idea of gangster rap to the world as a means to launder his money. You know, you get a lot of flack in the media these days. In a recent press conference, your manager came to your defense. A lot of people say gangster rap is misogynistic posturing by fake-ass idiots who spend more time in drama school than they ever did pimping or hustling dope. Well, I assure you, OG Loke is the real thing. He's hated women all his life. He sold drugs to school children. He's murdered innocent people just for kicks. But he rhymes like an angel. And I assure you, it's all in a good cause. So either way, you can feel good about yourself listening to this music. Crash abandons Carl in rural Whetstone to eliminate a witness against them. It is slowly revealed that they are being tried in court over their corruption in a case that is quickly building media attention. I heard all about that nice, handsome Officer Tenpenny going on trial. He could take down my particulars any time. I'd show him the position. Y'all hear about them two policemen that was on trial, Pulaski and Tenpenny? 
Ten penny or whatever. Wow, this is the master sounds, and I am the love giant. I'm gonna spread it all over you. Caesar connects CJ to his mentally unstable cousin, Catalina, and the two form a relationship built on the robberies they commit together. Shortly after, Tim Penny introduces CJ to the truth, an aging hippie who is supplying Tim Penny with tons of weed, and tells CJ to frame a DA who was an enemy of Tim Penny's. Tim Penny demands that CJ pay for the shipment, which forces him to return to work with Catalina, who now has an obsessive crush on him. Carl also meets the San Firo Triad's leader, Woozy Moo, during a street race, which Catalina finds him at the race and expresses her feeling of neglect and anger, feeling that he was only interested in her as a partner in crime, also proclaiming that she has a new boyfriend, Claude. CJ defeats Claude and Catalina in a street race, gaining a deed to Claude's rundown San Firo garage. While in San Firo, Carl meets with Woozy Moo and the two quickly become strong allies, collaborating to take down each of their enemies. Carl targeted Big Smoke suppliers, the local syndicate, and Woozy's rivals, the Nang Boys, infiltrating and eventually killing all of the syndicate members, Jizzy B, T-Bone Mendez, and eventually even Ryder from the Grove Street families. While in Doherty, San Firo, CJ turns his small garage into a successful Grand Theft Auto ring as well as renting out a property, earning Carl a modest sum of money. Thinking he killed off all the local syndicate, he receives a surprise phone call, revealing him to be a government agent and is recruiting Carl's help in exchange for releasing Sweet from a life sentence. Although it's a well-kept secret from all of his friends, the truth finds Carl at Torino's place of operation and warns Carl that Torino can't be trusted. The Truth then recruits Carl's help in stealing a jetpack from Area 69, dragging Carl into a rabbit hole of mysteries. Shortly, Boozy invites CJ to the Triad's glamorous Four Dragons Casino in Las Venturas. Upon arrival, Carl is given shares in the casino by Woozy in exchange for some help setting it up. They are faced with an aggressive competition from the Mafia who runs Caligula's Palace and, as revenge, spent time planning an extremely elaborate heist on the casino. This duel involves Carl infiltrating Caligula's inner circle of management by chance of the Truth's association with music industry employees Kent Paul and Macer to work with their manager, Ken Rosenberg, and even Don Salvatore Leone, later helping the trio fake their deaths to escape Salvatore's rage. During this period, Crash extracts the last of Carl's labor before they try to kill Carl and kill Hernandez for snitching on them, with Carl killing Pulaski and escaping alive. Carl, by chance, sees Mad Dog attempting suicide and saves his life, partially out of guilt for ruining his career. Carl's ongoing vendetta towards Ten Penny and Big Smoke, finalized by Mad Dog having to sell his mansion to drug lord Big Papa prompts Carl to return to Los Santos, taking back the rapper's mansion by force. While recording Mad Dog's new album, Torino gives Carl the last of his work before Sweet is released from prison. Sweet is disgusted at Carl for his new millionaire's lifestyle and for having forgotten all about helping the Grove Street families. Sweet immediately takes Carl back to Grove Street to begin their task of reclaiming all of their turfs. As the gang slowly begins their third return to power, Carl manages to get Mad Dog's rhyme book back from OG Loke, reviving Mad Dog's career as hitting Big Smoke close to home. In the case against Tim Penny, it's shown on the news that since there is no evidence implicating him in his criminal activities, he would walk free. That bastard Pulaski will probably turn up listen, dead listen. just like the rest of them. In light of the lack of evidence against my client, the district attorney's office has seen fit to drop all charges what? against this innocent man. That's bullshit. You see, you can't trust the system, man. This surprise decision is wholly unprecedented. Oh, man, ain't no justice. Seconds after, citywide riots commence in outrage at Tempenny's acquittal. During the confusion, Grove Street families retake almost half of the city's turf. And after an assault on his crack palace, Carl kills Big Smoke. Drop the gun. You ain't leaving here alive, man. Where's your brother at, huh? Why you just didn't shoot me in the back? Feeling exposed, huh? Shut your dumb ass up and load the bag. Come on, let's go. I ain't got time to fuck with you. So what it's like, Tim Penny? Huh? All alone? Nobody got your back? Suck, huh? Why you think I'm alone? I got a couple of rookies outside. 
But I gotta open their eyes slowly, you know. Little truth here, little truth there. All right, fuck it, that's enough. Chuck it over. I got a fire truck to catch. You crazy, man. After Carl and Sweet chase him across the city through the riots, gunfire, and traffic, as his fire truck falls from a bridge above Grove Street, Tenpenny dies from his injuries, ending in the gang celebrating in the Johnson home. By the end of 1992, Carl is a young and wealthy man. His assets and business interests include the Grove Street family's gang and Mad Dog's contract in Los Santos, a car garage and several other properties in San Fierro, and shares of the Four Dragons Casino in Las Venturas, as well as the government's $60 million jetpack. It's suggested that Carl, Mad Dog, and Kent Paul and Macer are to go on a worldwide tour as mentioned by Mad Dog, but where is Carl Johnson? It is to be believed that Carl could have died in Liberty City or simply grown out of the gang-banging phase after landing modeling gigs and owning possibly several businesses across Los Santos by the mid-2000s. If we had to take a guess, we would say that he could have gone into hiding after the FIB had enough, breaking their relationship with the former gang leader, ending in him serving life or into hiding. However, this will forever remain the biggest mystery in Los Santos' history.